Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for, uh, for all being here. Um, and um, today I'm going to talk about grafting and propagation mainly, um, but especially about challenges that propagators face globally. Um, and the main question there is, what is giving propagators the biggest headache nowadays? Um, I talk to a lot of uh, growers and propagators um, as a sales manager for food and grafting specialist, and I've collected basically a lot of opinions and, uh, and, and um, facts from growers, um, and that's what the presentation is going to be about. So today, um, the biggest challenges that we are facing in the propagation uh, sector and for grafting specifically, um, correct me if I'm wrong, so please tell me, but risk of uh, a disease outbreak, growing labor cost, which is a big one, um, push from customers to keep the prices low, this is, I think, applicable to a lot of growers, um, and challenging cir circumstances due to climate change. Do you, do you recognize this? Is this? Do you agree or do I miss anything? So maybe if we make your life easier with automation, this could be you in a few years. That's the goal. That's why I'm here. And that's our job as TTA ISO, to make your life easier. But let's start with the basics. I know most of you know this already. Why are we grafting? It's obvious to a lot of you. But still, I wanted to, to start here. Um, so the main reason, of course, more yield. You get more disease resistance, which is also, um, in a lot of crops, uh, a very important one. Um, the plants can stand different climate conditions better. And you increase your plant quality. Um, and these are all reasons to be grafting, and a lot of you have been doing this for years now. But it brings some downsides too, as you know. So there's a risk of losing plants. You're, you're damaging plants, basically. There's a hygiene risk, because even though your plants are more disease resistant, you still, you still have the risk of getting maybe tomato virus, or you're handling plants more often, so there's increased risk there. And the cost. So I found that about 30 to 50% of the total cost of a grafted plant um, is really the grafting labor. And that's where we can play a role. We've been in doing automation for grafting for, for many years, I think 14 years now. And as you can see, this is our, our latest portfolio. Um, we have a lot of solutions for that. But I said before, making your life easier, that's, that's what it's all about. So we have several solutions for different markets, different types of growers. And I'm going to explain why you should use a machine to do grafting instead of manual grafting. Because these downsides um, can be mitigated. So first of all, the clipping machine. Um, some of you already have a clipping machine from us. Um, and as you can see, well, this has a new logo and a new new branding, so it looks even better now. Um, but the main goal of this machine is to save you labor. Not, it doesn't do the full process of grafting, only does 50%, so it cuts the rootstock and puts a clipper on it. Uh, but it can still do 4,000 plants per hour. You can do it with one operator, and you save a lot of labor already with this machine. It's a little more affordable than, than the big one that you see there. Um, but this can, this can be a very good solution, especially because the big machine that you saw during the break is for uh, grafting above the cotyledons of the scion. And oh, this is only for rootstock, so you can use it for, for both, above and under the cotyledons. And then the second machine in the lineup is the grafting machine for under the cotyledons. Uh, also 4,000 plants per hour, one operator. 
um, and you can save 100% of your grafting uh, labor cost um, I, apart from the operator then. So this <laughs> is a new uh, innovation that's coming up this year, and it's relevant for a lot of you because I think a lot of people here don't graft under the cotyledons. So this is the, the machine, the version that can do above the cotyledons. Don't look too much at the render because it's not 100% accurate. The final render will, will be released hopefully this summer. And we are planning to introduce this machine um, in autumn this year, um, which means you can now also graft above the cotyledons, which is very relevant, especially for Western Europe, Canada, and a lot of the, the big regions for grafting. You can save about 75% of the grafting labor there, so it's not going to be like this machine. You, you need, still need some people to hang in the scions because it's much more difficult to do than under. Um, but I'm happy to talk to you about this uh, in the next break. And then the final option that we have, which is also new, um, is the graft single. And this is basically a smaller version um, of that grafting machine. It can do 1,000 plants per hour with one operator as well, if you have a, a lineup of several of these. Um, and potentially you could save, with that lineup, you could save 100% labor too. So the idea is that this machine, it, you don't have just one, it's, it's usually you would have four, for example, or three or whatever, and then uh, you have a full lineup of, of um, smaller machines, which mitigates your risk. If one, one stops, you can still use the others, etc. But it's a very good option for low-cost regions. So Mexico, for example, is a very nice option, or South America in general, uh, Turkey, you name it. This could be a very good option um, for those countries. But let me get back to the, the main question that I just um, had, was how do we mitigate those risks that grafting brings? because we, we really believe that machines can be a big part of that. And um, reducing the risk of losing plants, as I mentioned, is one of the, the main points there. So just a, a quick uh, zoom in on this machine. We use vision systems. Um, and um, so vision systems for in-feed and for out-feed. We check plants that go in to the machine and they come out of the machine. So we were absolutely sure that all the plants are suitable to be grafted and that they are grafted correctly, which means even if you have plants that are rejected, they're not grafted correctly, you can still uh, recover them. That's what this recovery system is for. So in theory, you're basically not losing plants there. Um, and also, it's a machine. As I think Hank Jan said it before, a lot of people have said it, machines always do the same job, so it's consistent. Then a, a very big question for you. I think I've been asked this question a lot of times by now. Hygiene. I think for, um, for a very high value crop like tomato, it's really important to have good hygiene, to have um, to be sure that the, the tomato virus uh, will not enter your facilities. We've seen some examples uh, in places around the world where that has happened, um, and the consequences were pretty uh, big, so let's keep the virus out. We use UVC lights in a machine, um, which means the machine is basically filled with lights. I don't think they're in this machine specifically, but um, it's, it's really a very nice option to have. All the, the parts, the moving parts that touch plants are disinfected by the UV lights. And we have uh, liquid containers for the grippers, so grippers that actually touch the plants. They can be uh, um, disinfected by, for example, Vircon or other liquids that you use. Um, the blade change system, you might have seen it already in that machine, but it's very easy to change the blades. And depending on what you prefer, change them often or not so often. 
very good for hygiene, of course. Um, and we have a little washing system. It's basically like a car wash for all the holders that contain the plants. So the point is, every part in that machine that touches a plant can be disinfected during that process. So, yeah, I won't say 100%, but we are very, very sure that this will um, combat a lot of the, the potential risk of getting a virus in there. And then the final part I wanted to touch upon is the cost of grafting and, and why, it's, uh, why, why automation can be uh, a big solution for that. So uh, I think it's good to have a, a sort of a, um, a plan on how to uh, reduce these costs because it's not only buying an expensive machine, it's also making a, a, a good case and basically adapting your business to automation. It can be many machines, it can be sorting machine, but the whole process should be right. So you should start with identifying the biggest uh, cost drivers in your nursery. I've seen that in a lot of places all over the world where um, you know, just buying a machine won't solve all your problems. You should have a look at the, the whole nursery, and my colleague uh, Renko will talk about it later. Uh, you should have a look at the whole nursery, uh, identify the biggest cost drivers, and then create a plan for, for the future layout. Make your nursery future-proof. Um, the next step would be implementing the, the measures, of course. So the, sometimes uh, a customer comes up to me and says, oh, I need a grafting machine. But maybe the biggest problem isn't really grafting. Maybe starting with sorting, sometimes a better option. Because um, yeah, if you don't have consistent plants, grafting is also harder. So maybe we should start with sorting there. Um, and then we should do it step by step. Second step could be a grafting machine. Um, but the bottom line is keep innovating. I think, um, you know, even if you have a fully automated nursery, there's always something to improve. There's always something to innovate there. Um, and then just, an, just an example I wanted to show you about labor cost and business cases around the world that we've seen for grafting machines. Um, so the, the interesting part here is, as you can see, we have Australia and the Netherlands, um, high labor cost countries, where usually they graft uh, maybe 200 or 250 plants per hour manually. Um, of similar cases, 2.5 million and 3 million plants per year. And, and the return on investment is, is pretty good. Um, but the, the interesting part is, in Spain and Chile, they have a much lower labor cost, and the business case can still be good. Um, so we see that, that these machines can work in a lot of different places, uh, even if you have low labor costs, and that's sometimes unexpected for a lot of growers. Um, but we see that, you know, and even if the return on investment isn't amazing, you can really improve the consistency of your grafted plants, quality of your grafted plants, and there's so much more to improve, as I said, hygiene and, you know. Um, so this shows that, um, you know, e e all over the world, automation and grafting machines can play a big role in making your business more profitable. And then finally, I, I wanted to um, yeah, give you a little um, example, which is related to cost, but it's also not about cost, because here, so, so we're talking about Morningstar, they have one of our grafting machines here, it's processing tomato, uh, we do a lot of work there with uh, Hyundai. <laughs> um, and, and we see that, um, it, it works really well, you know, it's a different, different crop, basically, than what you're doing. Um, but what makes it so interesting is, um, yes, we are reducing cost, but um, we are basically creating a new business case where we go from a non-grafted plant to grafted plant. So we're increasing cost, 
And then the machine uh, plays a crucial role in making that business case work. So we first increase cost, uh, and, and then it works. And that's pretty, uh, it's pretty exciting uh, stuff. Uh, we're doing it together with Morningstar, and also Iris uh, works on the rootstock genetics. They play a big role in making this uh, happen. But we've seen 25% uh, yield increase, and, um, and that's with 50% less plants per field. Um, and also, uh, for you it's not so relevant, but with grafted plants you can create a, a broom rape resistant plant, for example, um, and they're working on tetraploid rootstocks. I'm not a plant expert, but apparently they're very, very nice and they give even more yield. So, to conclude, um, I want to end with a question for you, for all of you. Are you ready to sit back and relax and let the, the machine take away your headache? That's what I'm here for, and I hope that machine can help you with that. Thank you.